you guys like my glasses i just found a few minutes ago on the range top so we're gonna wear them in today's video they're a little bit bent up tad crooked but they'll serve everybody's seen that thing that i just did a few seconds ago right where you know you've seen it on instagram dude standing in some arbitrary box marked out on the ground shooting something with his usually lpvo optic and then you know bang bang and then you see him switch over to the 45 sights and then wham, 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 wham. Usually at a target somewhere off screen of indeterminate distance. With a target composition that doesn't make a whole lot of noise when you hit it, and of course their groups are super tiny after that video has been cut down for time. And I just described about half of my videos. Okay, cool. So the purpose for all of that drivel at the beginning was I had a mind to talk about 45 offset sights today. And the reason why is because a lot of times in popular media, I see them used in a way that I think uh, gives a false perception of how the sites are to be used to the end user who is a per prospective purchaser of the, of the site. So for instance, in this particular setup, I have an Arcan SH4 Gen 2 here. This is a 4 to 16 power scope. If I'm up at 16 power and I've got my parallax set to five, 600 yards or something like that, I am not picking up a 50 yard target in this optic. So having a set of offset sights set up for close range is a, is a pretty decent idea. The sights that I choose to use are the XS branded sights. And the reason I like these are really twofold. First, they are very simple sights. They don't got a whole lot going on. They are a set of pistol sights. The other thing about those that I like is that they are not a folding set of sights. They are a fixed set of sights. I see the thing with the folding sights, you know, on the side of the gun and I think, okay, well, we just run that scenario again that we just went through where we're like, magnified, 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 offset sights and you gotta flip them up and then you gotta break your hold to get up there and flip the other front one up. Like, in my opinion, that's just, it's just dumb. So having a set of fixed sights on the side of the gun that are always set up, in my opinion, is the way to go. Now, in doing that, those sights must be shorter than a full height sight. And the reason why is because if you had a full height sight sticking off the side of the, the, the firearm, you have to, again, remember, you have to get out over top of the barrel. So to do that, not only do you need the standard height, but you need some more to get on top of the, the barrel. The geometry works out that way. So what you end up with, if you got a fixed sight that's at full height, you end up having this big dog leg hand off the front of your gun that you just run into everything, <laughs> okay? So having a shorter sight that is fixed, in my opinion, is advantageous. Now, usually what that results in is people use them wrong. So if we stand here and go to our just naturally occurring grip, which would be this, actually sets up sights incorrectly. There's actually three things that you have to line up with a set of 45 offset sights that you take for granted when you're using a set of inline sights. You have to line up the front sight, the rear sight, I guess four because you got the target, front sight, rear sight, target, and the barrel. But usually the barrel is in line with the sights. Well in this instance that's not because it's offset from the line of the, the barrel. So in order to do that we have to first train <laughs> but we have to orient the sights and make sure those sights are over top of that barrel. If we were to just go to 45 and try to put these sights straight vertical, what we actually end up doing is kicking our barrel out to the side. And that is going to adversely offset the impact of that bullet. So I have a very simple demonstration that we're gonna do for you guys here today. We're just gonna shoot it and show you the difference. So I did make a small error today. I forgot my really nice microphone and because of that, I don't have the wind protection I normally would have. So I've had to sit up a little bit farther back off the range to keep the wind from interfering with the sound signature quite heavily. So I apologize for the major contrast between the really bright range and the dark shaded area that we're in. Because I'm farther off the range, I can't use the table that I would want to use if we were trying to shoot very stably. So I've set us up on the back of a tailgate today. So we're gonna do our best not to pull a suit today. Love you, Don. We're gonna start off with the way it should be done. And we're just going to rotate the gun until the sights are in line and then the barrel is underneath of that sight picture. And we're just gonna squeeze off a couple rounds. Okay, 
clearly we've got some hits, so that was good. And then we're going to, just got bit by a bee, thank you very much, that hurt. So we've rolled the gun over to make the sights completely vertical, and we'll see what happens. So we're clearly a little bit close. Let's run down the other end and show you. And here we have our first three from our first series. And these ones are clearly good as far as the wind is concerned, but I clearly did not do my part on the elevation. And then the four from our second series is the first one, and then these three. This hole down here was previously existing from another test. You can also see that there's plenty of splash here from that piece of steel. But clearly we have got a shifting of the group quite substantially. I'd call that four or five inches or something like that, enough to miss this big piece of steel at 50 yards. Yeah, we're not talking about an insignificant shift when we're talking about using these sights correctly. Well, that concludes the demonstration component of today's video. These things did all right, right? For range glasses, I can't complain. There are a few things I wanna close with though. First and foremost, I understand that outfitting your stuff with high quality equipment can be expensive. And just because it's pro cost prohibitive though, doesn't mean that it can't be accomplished. And that's not me endorsing um, irresponsible financial decisions. I'm saying that there are ways to do that. So buying once and crying once, taking advantage of, hey, putting a whole bunch into one package, because I think shipping, uh, flat rate shipping is like nine bucks right now for like the small packages. So you do that a couple different times and you can almost bought yourself a whole new set of sites. So that's something to keep in mind that, hey, bundling all at once, good idea. And then also looking for sales. So I know that XS, since we're talking about them, is really good at running sales around holiday season. So if you're picking up this video later in the year, like Black Friday or something like that, it'll probably be something going on then. And then I know every year they run a 4th of July sale. So I, what is today? I don't even know. Um, I don't have my watch on or my phone in my pocket. But probably about the time this video publishes, it should be fourth of july season and a lot of 2a minded companies are going to run sales during uh, the fourth of july season so just throwing that out there there are ways to get this done in mass and then the last thing i want to talk about was error so we saw some error today part of it is because i ripped the sights off of a different rifle this this morning because i needed that rifle to do something else <laughs> so these aren't zeroed at all but they're relatively close Remember that when we're talking about inline sights, we have a situation where everything is zeroed out. So the sights are directly on top of the barrel and the way, when that gun fires, it's going to discharge that projectile through a ballistic curve that those sights can then line up with. It still does that the same way when you move the sights off board. There will be some error when you decouple the two. You can minimize that error by bringing that barrel back in line with the sights. You won't completely fix it, but you can minimize that error. And that's really what I wanted to uh, bring into focus today. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you learned something, then please sound off in the comment section down below. And special thanks to our patrons on Patreon and Subscribestar that make videos like this one possible. We'll see you guys on a future video here at the VSO Gun Channel. I'm out.